Hey everybody, Rocks of Box 9 here with more Magic the Gathering Origin spoilers. If you saw my last video, we tackled Nyssa and Jace, and today we're going to tackle Gideon along with a bunch of other cool cards. So let's jump in with Kytheon, Hero of Akros, a 1 white for a 2 1 human soldier. At the end of combat, if he and at least two other creatures attacked, then you get to flip him, and he's transformed. 2 and a white, he gains indestructible until end of turn. So before we get to the flip side, very solid. One drop Planeswalker, guys. When have we ever had, even though I understand this form is not usual, but when have we ever had a one mana Planeswalker? Seriously, no drawbacks, very flexible card, very reasonable in aggressive decks to be able to flip. And if he sticks around or comes down late, and for whatever reason you can't flip him, he can gain indestructible on whim and block off creatures. Very awesome one drop. Now, he flips to Gideon Battleforge. Three loyalty, two plus. Up to one target creature, tax him until the next during the next turn if able. Plus one, untap until your next turn, target creature gains indestructible and untap it. Zero, he comes a four four human soldier with indestructible prevent damage dealt to him this turn. So plus one's very fine, especially for a one mana planeswalker. The lure effect, classic Gideon, and he's gonna have five loyalty when that happens. So especially er relatively early in the game, let's say turn three to five. Very reasonable. Even if it absorbs a, a death blow to you, great. Plus one gives a creature indestructible. Realize it's until your next turn, which means three your opponent's turn. So if you want to block an opponent's creature, if you want to just untap a creature that you had, use a tap ability, and then you want to untap them and give them indestructible, really tough to play against. And zero becomes a very flexible creature. All around awesome design. All around really is interesting. He's he's good. Period. Definitely good, but it's a question of just how good he is. I think he's really good. We'll likely see a good amount of play. Very flexible card. Love to see what he, he's going to set fit in the larger set. I'm especially terrified of something like him in a limited environment. Very cool design. Big fan. Then we also have more stuff relating to Planeswalkers. Chandra's parents are a card. Yep, I know. Weird, right? Pia and Kiran Nalar. 2 and 2 red for a 2 2. Enters the battlefield. 2 1 1 flying artifact creatures. Three sack and artifact deals two damage to our creature or player. So for me, I'm not even going to deal with this card as a constructed standard card. I really like the design for a cube. And the reason why is because it's a lot of value, but it also lets you build an archetype around it. Artifacts and cube are a thing. A lot of cubes have artifacts, including mine, as an archetype. But having cards that let you really synergize with artifacts that are not in artifact colors that you can almost build around, not so common. This card, I think, is absolutely fantastic for doing that. It gives you four power for four. Fine. Three to second artifact gives you incremental damage. Huge, fine effect. Really like the design. Definitely going to test it in my cube. Also in Commander, definitely a fun card, whether it's to build around, especially in maybe dual Commander, I would think this is pretty good. All around, great design, great card. Want to know more about Kaladesh and parents? Hope they put out those stories soon. Elemental Bond, two and a green. Enchantment, whenever a creature with power three or greater enters the battlefield, draw a card. These are always a double-edged sword for me. As an enchantment, it's harder to destroy, but it doesn't do anything unless you something else is being cast, which means in the turn you play it, rarely being used, and then it requires something else to activate. If you're going to have something like this, having it on a creature like Garrick's Pack Leader, which is five for a something creature that has the same effect, that's usually better just because you have a threat then and the mana doesn't sit. That's what makes this card questionable for a constructed environment. But of course, in Commander, sure win. Art is gorgeous. Really like the design of it for that format. But I don't think it's a great standard card because of the lack of body. Dwylan, Guilt Leaf Day, and 2 and 2 green for 3 4 reach. Elf Warrior, other elf creature you control, one plus 1. Whenever it attacks, you gain 1 life for each attacking elf, including itself, you control. Interesting card. Very good flavor because it sounds like from the flavor text from the card itself, which is this is our land, will not allow eye blights to poison its beauty, implies that we're defending the land, so it's defensive, but it's taking the fight to the enemy. And that's kind of what the card itself embodies, this conflict. You have reach, which is a fairly defensive mechanic, but then when it attacks, you gain one life. So when it's attacking, then you're gaining life. So your life gain is defensive, but your attacking is what's required to cause it. So in terms of the card design itself, I really like it. In terms of its playability, it's a fine elf warrior. I like that it doesn't require a tap. It doesn't have like a tapping ability. I like that it activates off the attack. What's also interesting to note here is it's two and two green. 
The fact that Pia and Kira and the, Kira and Nalar are two and two red, me it implies to me there's going to be a legendary cycle of these. Dwynen's probably related to Nissa somehow, maybe a teacher, mentor, or something. But it's frustrating for Tiny Leaders, which is a very fast exploding format one I'm definitely enjoying and you can't run it if the rest of the cycle are also four mana that would be sad but great card in terms of commander elves for sure and be interesting to see if it actually can get anywhere with in, in standard last card is ravaging blaze which is a red card two and x for an instant deals x damage target creature spell mastery if there are two or more instant sorceries in your graveyard it deals x to the player as well so it's two X, scalable effect, instant speed removal for a creature, and if you happen to have instant sorceries, it also hits your opponent as well. If it's an uncommon, which it is in this picture, and it's in Magic Origins, not just the dual Planeswalkers or whatever this is in, then heck yeah, wow, what a great removal spell. They say it right here, but it's it's true. Instant speed, creature removal, scalable, that could potentially, without much trouble, do a huge amount of damage to an opponent as well. Pure value, great card, really like it. So I'd love to hear you guys think about these cards. What do you think about the legend, potentially legendary cycle and just the legends we have? What do you think about Gideon? I know, I'm sorry, he's a little late, but still wanted to get my thoughts out there. Definitely let me know yours down below in the comment section. If you enjoyed the video, then tap the like button. If you're new to the channel, check in and subscribe. I'll keep you up to date with Magic Origin spoilers and all kinds of other Magic info and news as it comes out. And as always, Rocks of Box 90 signing out. I'll see you guys next time.